Hey folks, it's Mangrel. Welcome back to the channel. And according to JB, I am a nerd because I spent Christmas and the holidays playing around with the customizable OSD elements on the V1 and the V2 DJI goggles. So this is the modification that allows you to kind of piggyback on the WTF OS and modify the lockdown elements of the DJI on-screen display. So I've gone ahead and I've customized my OSD. I've moved things around. I've removed elements. So very exciting for me to get back into V1 and V2 after spending so much time with the O3. So let me walk you through how exactly you do that. We'll go a little bit quickly. There are a lot of steps, but if you get stuck or if you get confused, use the comments, feel free to email me or just really slow down the video. You can put the video into 25% quarter playback and just follow along very slowly. This works perfectly on the V2. So this is the V2 here, works perfectly on the V1. It does not work on the goggles too. All right, let's go. So before we get started, let's take a look at what we're actually trying to accomplish. And I got the link to this repository from JB's YouTube. But ultimately what we're trying to do is we're trying to supercharge our OSD on our V1 or V2 goggles. So this is only for V1 or V2. This does not work on the goggles too. So what you currently have after you install the WTF OS is something like this. So this looks very good. We have full MSP kind of display port OSD, which is what we're typically seeing more on the analog quad side. So we have the option, but it's limited to four by three. So we cannot push these elements to the very edge. It also is not uh, the cleanest looking thing because it's not very conducive of that HD sort of experience. So you can see that the fonts are a little bit bigger. They're a little bit more jagged around the edges. So still leaves a little bit uh, to be desired. And what this actually looks to do is give you this kind of experience. So you can see very crisp fonts. You can see different color kind of um, suffixes there. You see really nice icons and logos. And also they're all pushed to the edge. So that's what we're trying to get. Now the really cool thing here is we can get dynamic icons. So these icons, for example, the battery, it starts green. And as you use the quad and as you fly the quad, it becomes you know, yellow and then becomes red. That's, that's awesome. You have that. You can also move around your native DJI elements. So before these were all locked, you cannot move them around. Now you can. So we're going to be getting this kind of experience. And in terms of the steps to actually do this, first thing you have to do, of course, is you have to install the WTF OS. So you have to root your goggles and install that. And in order to do so, you have to be in a very specific version of the DJI firmware. So there are really good videos already out on installing this and kind of rooting your goggles. So I'll go pretty fast in this area. My focus will be on how do I bring my V2 goggles to this version? because I did update my goggles fully all the way to the end, to the latest firmware. So I had to go through some additional steps. Next, you'll have to configure your ports in Betaflight. So you'll run these commands. I do have a video on setting up the MSP OSD. So I'll give you the link to that video if you need more information, but pretty clear cut, just run these commands and you're good to go. Now this here, the dollar sign should be set to your port that's marked as MSP less one. So if you're using, for example, UART1 as your MSP, you'll put your actual command here as zero. So, you know, one less one, so zero. Then within Betaflight, you'll set up your OSD, you'll move all the elements around. And the key here though is you have to abide by this mapping. So we go from a four by three over to 16 by nine. And check out these colors. So anything you put here will show up in this corner. Anything you put here in the middle, anything here in this corner, your warnings have to be in the middle. So you don't have as much kind of control over that, but that's how it kind of maps. Anything that's white will be blank space because we don't have a mapping for that. Okay, so I'll walk you through this. Number four, I did not do this, but up to you. So number five, yep, I did that one. So I actually went with this font package. Yep, I did number six. Now over here is where I ran into some issues. I wasn't able to get this Python script working, the visualization. So I did mine more through trial and error. So I skipped this. 
yep i did update the fonts i did not change the icons because i was pretty happy with the kind of font package and the icon package so i didn't need to do that and number seven i did not do that either yeah so like i mentioned the first thing i had to do was i had to get my v2 goggles to the proper software my v1 was already on 0606 so that was fine i had no problems there but on the v2 i was on 0607 so i had to download this particular package unzip it and then i was able to get that one going and there's a good readme in there which walks you through the exact steps but what you have to do is you have to run the driver installer first that installs all the required drivers it takes a few minutes and then from there you run the windows run me.bat you make sure the goggles are off initially then when it says waiting you turn your goggles on and at that point in time it'll go ahead and it'll do all the installation to downgrade the software even if dji will not let you do so okay and then once finished i went to the fpv wtf website and i attempted to root the goggles and the first time around it actually failed the second time it was successful so it did actually fail halfway through but when i did a quick restart of the goggles it did go through successfully yeah so you can see step three it actually fails but i did a quick power cycle and once i power cycled the goggles it actually did um, successfully go through the first time around even after i power cycled the goggles it did not work so if yours does fail, make sure you try this a couple of times. It does seem like it will go through eventually. Yeah, and there we go. So this was successful. It says your device has been successfully rooted and you only have to root this device once. Now at this point, once you've rooted, you're able to go to next steps. And also if you do any software upgrades, that is fine as well. It's not an issue. So you can see here that um, everything looks okay. I have the ability of connecting to the device. Now, for some reason, mine was not reconnecting after I did the rooting. So what I ended up doing was I did a quick power cycle of the actual goggles itself. Yeah, I also ended up leaving the website and coming back in. And as soon as I ended up doing that, you can see that it did successfully connect, but it failed a health check. So I just clicked the attempt fix. It's telling me slot two active, but it should be installed in slot one. So I just click the attempt fix button and voila, it has attempted the fix. And I think it was successful in doing that fix. Now at this point, what I'm trying to do is update all the software to the proper version. So first I did the DIY mode. So I upgraded to the latest software and then I switched over to the Avada mode and I upgraded the Avada over to the latest as well using the consumer drone series. So at this point I am rooted and everything is fully up to date. So the only thing left is for us to actually start to install the packages. So in terms of the process, you know, first you have to root this and then you have to install um, the WTF OS and then the actual packages. So here I'm trying to install the WTF OS. And again, it takes a couple of minutes, but once it's complete, you are good to go. Okay, and that is complete. Then we go under the package manager and here you can choose which of these packages you want to install. So I install the auto recording because I want this to record automatically on connection. And then I install the FCC unlock. So I am in the FCC region. So just to make sure everything works okay, I've unlocked that. I'm installing the MSP OSD, which is the main reason why I wanted to get the WTF OS. So I've installed that and that should be really it in terms of packages i didn't see anything else that was of interest to me and you can see here that the routing is grayed out which means we're all good to go next i go over to cli because i i want to install what's called the fake hd so fake hd makes the msp uh, this on display actually look a little bit nicer 
So that's been installed. And then we have to do another command code to hide the menu switch. So I'll put all this in the video description, but we have to put this on here so that everything looks okay once we actually get the final statistics. Then we can download our choice of fonts. So I went with this particular font package for the fake HD. And you just take those fonts and you copy it over to the SD card of the goggles right in the main folder in the root directory. So we copied all four font files over. Okay, now once that's done, we need to actually get a software called ADP Fastboot. So once we get that, we extract it into a folder and when you type in some commands. So first thing we gotta do is start the actual ADB server and then we can look to make sure that it did pick up our goggles and you can see it has. Our goggles are connected and the goggles are on. And now we're just gonna take a quick backup of the system files. So that way in case we screw anything up, those system files are secure and we can always put them back. So this will take a couple of minutes just to pull everything and I just, grab all the files and I put them in the same folder as the actual ADB software. That just seems like it's the simplest and the least amount of typing. You can do the same thing and then clean it up later. So here there's, it's copying. We can see the files are coming all across. So this will bring things like the fonts. This will bring the configuration. This will bring uh, the actual um, icons as well. So here we're grabbing the XML file. So even though that was included in the actual backup, we're just making sure we grab that. We also placed our custom font file into the proper folder too. Now that you've run all those commands, you should be able to see a bunch of new files in your ADB folder. And here you can see the system. This is the backup of my goggles V2. I also see my racing osd win so this is the actual xml file that determines how everything is laid out in the osd of the goggles so i can right click on this i can say edit and over here is where i can now start modifying all the various settings now the first thing i want to do is replace and update the font so this is the default font that dji uses so i'll go edit i'll go replace and i'll just put replace that with my new file so i'm using this as my font you will put whatever font here that you uploaded to the goggles in the last step so i'll say replace all and from here it all becomes a little bit of kind of trial and error so you can modify these font sizes so you know if, if you see for example the custom voltage is too big. You can go ahead and make that smaller. So lots of trial and error, especially because that Python script would not work. And some of these things are pretty obvious what they are. So for example, if I come down here, I can see you know, RC signal, right? So that's pretty obvious what that is. If I come down a little further, I will see delay. So this is my delay. So maybe I want this to be moved somewhere else so I can modify the X coordinates, so this is DX, and I can modify the Y coordinates, I can move them up or down, left or right. And then the actual delay text right now is a size 22, you know, maybe I want that to be size 18. So you can kind of play with this a little bit. I also noticed that the whole show equals true, this one seems like it's a little bit hit and miss. When I say show equals false, sometimes it shows up, sometimes it doesn't. So I haven't been able to get this working 100% yet. And maybe it's really dependent on which element you use. But once you do all of this, you go through, you modify it, you can do a file save. And then from there, we'll have to resend this, re-upload it over to the goggles. And then we'll be able to kind of see that take effect. Hey folks, it's Mangro from the future, and it looks like using the show equals false, it does work only sometimes, it doesn't work all the time. So here I'm trying to hide the UAV battery and also the flight time. So I tried equals false, and then sometimes it's okay, sometimes it's not. So what I actually ended up doing was I changed this height parameter. So it used to be H equals 48, I made it H equals zero, and so far it is working okay. Now don't go deleting things. So I also tried deleting this whole block thinking that will resolve it, 
but that causes an error in the OST subroutine. So the OST keeps restarting in the goggles. So the OST shows up, disappears, shows up, disappears. So I think we have to be very careful with how we modify this file, but making the height zero seems to be working so far. And what I also noticed is that this file is the same between the V1 and the V2 goggles. So once you get this working and you know, to a state that you're happy with for your V1 goggle or V2, you can then put that on both goggles. So a little bit of a win, it's, it's a bit of a pain to work with this, but that is a little bit of a victory right there. And then all you have to do is push it back up to the goggles. And then once you push it up, you do a reboot and the reboot actually reboots the goggles so that the changes will take effect. Now, the next thing I did, I also tried out this OSD overlay. So I'll give you the link to this in the video description, but this allows you to take the video and the OSD file from the goggles and produce that little image you saw at the very beginning of this video. So you do have to go into WTF OS and put in these two commands in the CLI, which, hey, now you're an expert in doing that because you've been following along this entire video. And then we're gonna add in these files. So if we go on video, we can go to our SD card, we can go directory, and then let's say we want to do this one. So we can very easily copy this. And then it fills in this. Now we need to select our fonts. So I've got my fonts again on the root of my SD card. I'll select all four of them at once. Okay, and then all I gotta do is click on start. It'll tell me, okay, where do you want to record the updated video? I'll say save. And then here it actually starts to process. Now this only records the custom OSD. The DJI elements are not recorded. So not a perfect solution, but still way better than what we have currently with V1 or V2. Now within Betaflight, you can see how I've got my particular OSD set up. So very important, you want to have this guy here. So this is a throttle position. So you need to have this in position four. So one, two, three, four. And this is what the fake HD uses to turn on and off. You can make this be some other kind of um, element, but it just seems to work very quickly with this. And one of the commands that we use actually hides the first five characters here. So even though this you see on the display, it will not show up within the goggles. So it's used more for internal purposes. If you get this wrong or you screw this part up, what will happen is when you get your post-flight statistics or you enter your beta flight menu, the menu is going to be all over the place. So you're going to get one piece on the left, one piece on the right, and so forth. If you see something like that, check to make sure you did do this piece correctly. All right, so I hope you found this video useful and helpful. I know we went a little bit quickly, but if you have any questions, ask in the video description. No, don't ask in the video description. If you have any questions, ask in the comments, and we'll do our best to try to help and get you up and running. So make sure to like, subscribe, and comment, and stay tuned for more videos.